So good morning, ladies. Morning. Good morning, Donald. Lady Cynthia and Lady Phyllis. Uh, <laughs> so that Cynthia, we've been promoted. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I, hope, I hope he gives uh, us the mansion and the finance to go with it. <laughs> yes, absolutely, absolutely. We'll we talk about that later. Basically, this is a journey going back to our younger days. I mean, we've known each other for quite a few years. And we're just going to talk about the early years, really. I mean, I think we're all from the Caribbean, born, yeah? And yeah. basically, um, unlike some people who were born here, I normally take people back to where they were born, and we just don't live with a journey from there. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm going to start with, with this Cynthia. Cynthia, where, where, where were you born? Well, I was born in a small district called Tweedside. That's in uh, uh, Clarendon, but it's borders onto, if you've heard about Spalding. Yeah. So Spalding on the one side, and then you've got Christiana on the other end that goes into Manchester. But then I was brought up in Reaches, where my, because I was brought up by my grandparents when my parents left for England. Oh, so, no, there's a story straight away. Yes. Grandparents bringing you up. Well, that's yes. great. So, so, so what parish was that? Sorry. That's still Clarendon. That's still Clarendon. Still Clarendon. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, although my my grandparents and my and my parents, uh, my my mom really is from Manchester, is from a place called Allison in okay. Manchester. That's yeah. where they're from. But then my granddad had land, he was quite a little entrepreneur in his days, you would want to say. He had lots of land in Clarendon, so he settled there. All and right. he was also one of the butchers that um, had the had his space in the Spalding market. So I can see that you take after your granddad in doing numerous things in life, right? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, yes. So we, yeah, uh, uh, my, myself and my, my sister Faye um, was brought up in Reaches and my older brother, by my grandparents. Okay, I'm going to ask the same question to, to well, Phyllis. Well, before I even now see you, yeah. um, listening to Cynthia, yeah. it reminds me, I didn't realise we, geographically, we're so close, Cynthia, because my, I should know, but it's just bringing it into context for me now. My dad comes from Clarendon. Oh! Yeah, and in Ritchie as well. My dad's family is in Ritchie. Oh! Yes. I can't remember. Yeah. Yeah, and... Um, but I was born in Manchester. That's it. But then wow. my mom is always talking about your mom is quite close to us from Jamaica or something like that. But if she was in Manchester, that explains it. Yes. Well, because Alice is quite near to where I was born in Bombay. That's in Manchester. it. Yeah. And so if I just add on there, the some of the Bombay children came to the Reaches school because that was oh. kind of a, a sought after all age school. All oh, right. And then my, you will know this, uh, Phyllis, hopefully, my eldest sister, yeah. Lurleen, yeah. she is relative to your mom. Well, it's from the angle that I, I knew really? of that. But yeah. I just, Wow. Guys, but Donald, we, will, we may come back to it later because Cynthia, one of the things that occurred to me, it's reality, but I didn't, it didn't really, I hadn't really focused on it. The interesting thing is in our older age, my dad was your pastor and yes. your mom was my pastor. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, <laughs> and, and let me just add to that. Um, when I came to join my parents in, in, in England, yeah. the, first, the first two names came out of my mom's mouth was Pastor Thompson and Pastor Swaby. Wow. And I heard about those two names even. Yeah. Well, I never get to meet Pastor Sway because he went mm. back to Jamaica. Yeah. But then he was in, and because my mom was connected with Brixton at the Absolutely. moment. Absolutely. As a kid. Mission work. Yeah. And yeah. that's it. Then I got to meet your dad. Yeah. And realized, oh my, so this is the man she was talking about all the time. Yeah, <laughs> as, a, as a kid, when I came to England, it's such a second was at Mylen. And as yes. a kid, we, I used to be taken to Mylen a number of times every month. Yeah. Because Can I just ask the ladies? Oh, yes, let's remember what? that Donald is in this. <laughs> we got carried Sorry? away with our stories, Donald. You Sorry? See? We got carried away with our stories. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. That's great. Can I just ask them, respectively, what age you came to England? Me? I Me. came when I was nine. 
Okay. I came in uh, 68. And I was six, 1962. Yeah, okay. I came in 68. So, so, 68, okay. So just, just touching on, you talk about your experience in Jamaica. What was that like when mommy and daddy left you behind? Was it a good experience, indifferent, bad or what? Well, anyway. I didn't know any different because I was just so young. I was only, what, probably two. Uh, my mom left in 53. I was born in 51. So I was just about coming up to two years old. So for oh, me, it didn't make any difference. So right. I grew up with my grandmother calling her, in those days, you call them um, Mama or Mumma. <laughs> and, and, and that experience was, was a really good one for you? Some oh, people excellent. Just... I would okay. never had a better... My, I can tell you, my grandmother was probably 50 years um, above herself. Because the things that she taught us then, I'm thinking, wow, how did she know all that stuff? That's, 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 that's wonderful. Amazing. Yeah, and Phyllis, did you, who did you, who yeah. were you living? Well, I was, for me, it was, I've often thought about it. It, it was, I thoroughly enjoyed life. It, I didn't really feel any separation. My dad left, I think we might have been about three when dad, or a bit older when dad left. But mm -hmm. mom was there with my grandma and three oh. of us, three older ones of us in Jamaica. Right. And then mom, so I was aware, my two younger sisters wouldn't remember about dad, but I remember when dad was leaving and I think I was three. My earliest mm. memory mm. is of my dad leaving Jamaica. Oh, actually, when he was leaving Jamaica to go to, to America. That's okay. my earliest memory, childhood. Right. Then he came to England. I just knew he'd gone to England. To me, he'd gone away to come back in my head. All right. I was with mom and we were living and grandma had moved up to my parents' house. So it's like grandma had come to live with us. All right. Situation. And I said, so, and mom was there. Then mom, it was shared with us that mom's, by the time dad went to England, mom was going to England, be with dad to sort out homes until we would join them. Right, and, right, right. It was just a continuation with our grandma who we enjoyed. We were in the same home. Mm. Grandma looked after us and we got on really well. That, that's really good because I asked this question because I get such a varied answer mm. to that question, depending on who you're left with, yes. how long you were left there mm. and all of that. And, and, mom, and dad, mom kept in touch with us. We were always getting messages from them. So consequently, one of the memories I have as well is when we were leaving to, mom, and then mom came back to Jamaica to take us to England. Now, oh. when I was, the only thing, it, it's, it's kind of bittersweet. I don't think we were really prepared for the journey to England. That's another story yeah. altogether. <laughs> yeah, okay. But now when we were, so when consequently now, when I was leaving my happy home with my lovely grandma, All right. I remember at the airport, literally, I always remember this. I said, and grandma was a bit upset we were leaving. So I knew there was some bit, some sadness there. Okay. So okay. there was me, don't worry, grandma. I'll come and see you tomorrow. <laughs> And then they all started laughing, poor soul. She don't know what she can Absolutely, what absolutely. I heard I, them saying that, but I'm thinking they don't know what they're talking about because I know I'm definitely coming back tomorrow to visit grandma. I think we can all identify ourselves in that somewhere, you know, mm. because we had no knowledge really of the journey that we were about to undertake. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. that's another story. <laughs> and, and a little bit like Phyllis's experience. Um, when, when my grandma says, oh, your mom wants you to come to England now, because it's, if you didn't go within a certain time, you have to go into work. And I was oh. still in school age. So she said, oh, your mom wants you to come now. And I thought, oh, I don't really want to go there. Oh. You know, because I was having so No, I didn't really want to come to England, to be honest. I was having oh. such a good time with my grandmother. Oh. And because she was just so amazing. I've never seen, and, and in those days, you'd look at your grandparents, you think, oh, they're, they're looking old. But the level of wisdom and understanding was just amazing. Yeah. I would keep thinking, lady, you're beyond your years here. And, and so said, so true. So I didn't really want to come. Oh, so that's I remember interesting. I was at the airport and my grandmother and my school friends, they came in the, in the little mini, what they would have called it now, minivan. 
Mm. So this, about four or five of my school friends came because they were all crying and then, oh, you're going to go, you know, I hope you're going to remember us and all that kind of stuff. Mm. So I really didn't want to come. Uh, but then I, I thought, I realized that, yes, you are my grandparents, but you really need to be with your parents. Oh, right. This is your pet, yeah. And yeah. so, you know, you, you just go along with whatever had to be done. So you left, you left Jamaica and, you know, we've all had the experience of going on this big iron bird. That's what I used to call yeah. it back in the yeah. day, right? <laughs> Even just going up the steps and looking back, yeah. you know, and the, the whole journey was so, you know, it's just a transformation. Yeah. What was it like? Obviously, the journey was a long journey. What was it like when you arrived at wherever, Heathrow Airport or wherever you arrived? And I guess also is another question there. What time of the year? Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> When I got on, when I got onto the plane, this um, the, 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 oh, the, 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 I remember them saying, "Oh, this is a juvenile," because that's what they used to call. It. If you're below the age of eighteen, you're traveling on your own. Yeah. You're classed as a juvenile. Yes. And so somebody on one of the 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 air hostesses at the time had to mm. take charge of you. Yeah, yeah. And she came in and she said, "Oh, I'll take charge of you." And she sat me against this other lady, an old older woman. And she said, um, you make sure that even if she wants, you, you can alert me. Mm. And lo and behold, we our plane stopped in Nassau. Oh, really? And guess, guess who? And now, the point is this, where I lived in, in Reaches, if, unless you had one of them little radios, we didn't have a TV, mm. to hear what was going on in the rest of the world, you wouldn't know. Mm. So lo and behold, and now guess who came on our plane? The Beatles. What? No, I, really? I could, when and when they said the Beatles, I'm thinking, what do they mean? I'm thinking, I'm thinking of the little lamb. Yes. <laughs> no. Until the lady next to me, she said, that is the pop star. Those are the pop stars. They came onto the plane. It was just amazing. Oh but then, God. you know, at my age, then little girl from a little district didn't know any different. And oh, How uh, old were you? I was then 15. 14, okay. 15, going on 15, yeah. Right, right, right. right. But, but, you know, not everybody can say you, you've actually flown with the Beatles. That, 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 well, that is, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but then you see, that was a novice to me. I didn't kind of have no conception yes. of, of yes. Uh, a band or anybody that name. So unless the lady next to me said, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't have known any different. So you stopped in Nassau and then you then, then, to, then to England. And then, sorry? You stopped in, did you say Nassau? Yeah, the, the, the plane stopped in, in Nassau for a short while. We didn't have mm. to come off the plane. Yeah, yeah. And then whoever had to came on, came, and then we came straight so to like, London. Yeah. Was that the same name for you, Philip? Did you actually stop anywhere? We didn't stop you? anywhere. But for me, oh. the plane was, it was just, it was a quiet excitement, you know, in that, because as we found, our mum would come back to pick us up. Oh, I see. From Jamaica. Course, My mum came back to Jamaica for us this year. Right. So oh, right. It was the three of us, the four of us were sat in the together. Okay. My two sisters, my two sisters must have my mum. And so it was just nice. For me, it was just enjoying right. being with my mum to go and see our dad. Uh, that, 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 I can understand that, really, because it's two different experiences. Yeah. Because I can see what Cynthia is talking about. Yeah. Where, you know, if you're on your own, as in, even with yeah. another sibling, but yeah. if you're on your own as a youngster, mm. it's a completely yeah. different experience than yes. if you're with a parent, because you right. feel that like comfort with mommy or daddy. It was. You? And, yeah. you know, she kept us occupied, you know, talking to us about different things, what we'll say. Right, right. And, also, and, when and also, right. of course, when the food came, that was another thing, but it was different. Oh, yes. <laughs> So, but yeah. the thing is, again, she was telling us what it was and, you know, whatever. So it was, it was, what's the word I'm looking for? Experiment, not experiment, it was discovering. We were discovering a lot of things. All oh, right, okay, okay. So talking about food then, yeah. what's one food that stood out? Because I have a food that stood out in my mind. One food that stood out straight away on the, on the aircraft. No, for me, we, you have to, have, to, have to ask me another question when we're having breakfast in England. That's that's what I remember about food. All oh, right, okay. I just remember okay. different things, turning out different things, chatting to mom. And the next thing I knew, we were in England because I was oh. asleep. <laughs> oh my god! Well, that, that, that's not so bad. What about you, Cynthia? Was there food that stood out for you in the, in the aircraft? Well, this is it. I, I I can't remember what the food was. What what yeah. all I remembered is when we were coming on, 
my grandma's packed me a little packet of those little biscuit, little crackers. Mm. And I remember on the plane, I took out my crackers and was eating my crackers. That was it. I can't remember what the food on the plane was like. Well, well I can tell you, and it stayed indelibly in my mind. Then give me some baked beans. And I said, what? This one is right. right. Is sweet, sweet something. Yeah. <laughs> That for me, that for me for the breakfast. Honestly, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. You know, I'm looking like some ackee and selfish or something. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness, I've often written about that, Donald. Yeah. For me, that's what I said later on, because for me, two things, mm. baked beans and tea. And tea. All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the tea, I mean, I, can, I, I enjoy tea, the different teas now, but I can yeah. remember my, what, what the tea tastes like for me then. Right, and the baked right. beans, it just didn't sound right. And I'm thinking ackee and selfish is what I want. <laughs> so, beans and tea. And, and, yeah. So another stark thing that 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 stands out normally with, with everybody is the yeah. the weather, the climate, yeah. the change. Mm. Was it winter or summer for you guys? Yeah, it was when May. You... So I didn't. It did, the winter didn't come to me until later on. Right. And okay. Story. And the fog. Oh gosh. Yeah. And... I came in um in February. Oh dear. So it, it was cold. Oh, oh my dear. God. So the experience was. <laughs> was not very good uh-huh. <laughs> and the strange thing is um my mom wanted me to get acclimatized as soon as i could i think it was about a couple of days after i arrived she said now you need to go out on the street and see what it's like so i went out was passing this bus stop we lived in kensal rise mm. in in north london and i saw those people standing at the bus stop and the smoke coming out of the mouth <laughs> It was just, it was just so funny. So when I went back in, I said to my mom, I said, there are all these people at the bus up and there was all this smoke coming and they were all smoke. She said, no, it's the cold. <laughs> it was just so funny. Oh, man. oh my God. That, that, That's such a dramatic thing coming yeah. from the temperature where, you know, you yeah, just yeah. wear shirts if you, mm. all day or whatever. Yeah. And then you come to a place where you're clad in minus yeah. temperature. Yeah. I actually went outside in my slippers. Oh, no. <laughs> and when I arrived, it's, I arrived in February as well. Oh. It was three weeks nonstop day and night snow. Oh, this my was goodness. This nice and, and, of course, I was a new kid on the block. Yeah. So all these youngsters coming up. He's gone on coming out to play. <laughs> <laughs> So I can't even understand fully what they said, but you know, I'm going out because I'm, I want to, and I went out in my slippers, all this snow, in my oh, slippers, no. you know, so <laughs> dramatic experience, all, all, all that sort of thing. So what happened next then, school-wise and all that sort of thing? Mm. Well, oh, it wasn't long before we went to school, okay. and yeah, not, not far away from, you know, it's quite near to where we lived, mm. and um so sorry, Phyllis. When did you did you come to London or did you come to London? Paris? London. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. I went to, went to school there, and um, well, lots of things happened in the school. The primary school, there were because sixty two was when you know Caribbeans were coming more and more into England. So it's yeah. like each month or every so often there'd be a new black person in the school. Oh, right. Because, okay. Because when yeah. we went, there might have been a you know a handful of black children yeah yeah, yeah actually yeah. It might have been about five if i remember rightly okay. and then in different classes so there's nobody in my class and then i remember then a lad came and he was from jamaica and like about a few months later another one came and all oh, right, right, yeah. right so that's how it's yeah, gradually yeah yeah, 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 yeah few yeah. asian but you know a few characters yeah. Yeah, the yeah, primary yeah, yeah. school they weren't a, a lot it's secondary school that you know a lot more black children okay but and it was quite you, interesting, it was a gradually increase yes, of black children. And I, then I in school, the other thing for me, which I won't forget, is that in some subjects, we were more advanced yes. than the children, and the teachers couldn't cope with it. But that's another story. I would have yeah. known it as prejudice and racism and all of that then. Mm. I was just very hurt and couldn't understand what's going on. Because, you, right. you know, especially in English, uh, I always remember... Um, the teacher was teaching parts of speech. I was nine years old. Yeah. Parts of speech. And I remember doing that when I was eight. So I remember, did, same for you, Cynthia. Look at that. So a question was asked, you put your hands up, and they, the teacher ignored or ignored me or made you feel as if you didn't know what you're talking about. I remember that distinctly. <laughs> and then making a decision in my mind. Well, 
you know, teacher's yeah. been a bit funny. I, I, I don't understand what's going on. I'll keep quiet. But I remember <laughs> thinking, these children are supposed to be the same age as me. And how come they're just doing that now? We did that a long time ago. Right. Right. Well, and that's why I asked about the school side of things, because I experienced the same. Was that the same for you, Cindy? Yes, uh, let me just jump in there. Now, funnily enough, my sister Faye came way back in 62. My mom came back mm -hmm. and took Faye with her. Mm -hmm. So Faye had the experience of um, the uh, um, year, well, it's now year one and year two yeah. in, in the secondary school system. Mm -hmm. And the school she went to was just across the road from our, from our road called Chamberlain School. Mm -hmm. My mom decided that when I came, I'm not going to be going to Chamberlain School. Oh. I'm going to a girls' school. So the mm. girls' school was in Neesden. Mm. And so, and this is so strange. When I was leaving Jamaica, our head teacher said, I would suggest you bring a few of your books just in case they want to know what level you are when you've left Jamaica. Mm. And so I brought an English, a maths, and we used to do um, what they call them. Um, uh, I think they call it it's sociology here now, but they call it something different in Jamaica mm -hmm. in my day then. So I brought mm -hmm. some of those books with me. And so we went up to John Kelly Girls, uh, with the head teacher and she said, oh, because the half term had just gone. Mm -hmm. By the time I get, I'd missed the half term. She said, the half term had just gone and so on. She was going on about this. She said, um, so we, but we will need to place your, your daughter into one of the groups. Uh, in, in, in the class and she said, um, have you brought anything with you that could give us an idea, uh, 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 indication of where you are? And they, I pulled out my books, I gave her my book. She said, oh, but the group we were gonna fit you in, we've noticed that you've gone past that already because what they didn't understand is all our textbook came from Cambridge. Mm -hmm. All our textbooks that we use in our school in Jamaica, mm -hmm. although it was an all age and what we would say all age primary, whatever school it is, all our books came from Cambridge, mm -hmm. all our textbooks. And she and she, she could not believe it. She said, oh, but your daughter has, um, your daughter is well advanced of the group we're going to, we will need to put her into the next set. Mm -hmm. And so I got moved from the set that we originally mm -hmm. thought I was going to go into mm -hmm. to another set because I've already passed it. And yeah. in those days, don't forget, every it, um, it's a slight exaggeration here, but making the point, every black child was sub educationally subnormal. That's yes. it. Don't bother yes. to test, don't bother to ask any question. Absolutely. On our Absolutely. assumption, this is where they belong. So and, that's it. I speak really... to a lot of people, and mm -hmm. then we're all, you know, they all say, we all say the same story. We can't yeah. believe, we can't believe yeah. Yeah. So how advanced we were in comparison to, to Zing. But I can remember this particular story that stands out in my head. Now, you know, we all come from Jamaica, right? We're talking Jamaica talk, right? Because that's what you do, hmm. right? But especially me coming from right in the country. I get in the class and I ain't speaking nothing but raw Jamaican. So my teacher then gets this, um, you know, back in the day you have the tape recorder and you press the thing down, the two hmm. thing and microphone. And he, he was so absorbed with my, the way I spoke. He put this tape recorder on and started recording to me. He says, Don't ask any questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 oh, the, the whole class. And so you know, what make you say? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so what those changes, you know, what we go through, it's it, yeah. it's quite something, you know. And, and they don't that's... think the teachers don't think what influence, what impact that's having mm. on the on the child Absolutely. in that classroom. Absolutely. What are they doing with you and your language? Yes. You yeah. Know? Yeah. 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 And, and you're so right, Phyllis. I remember the class I was placed into. I think there was about two, there was a, 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 a two other black girls in the class, apart mm -hmm. from me. It was three of us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in terms of the whole school, mm -hmm. um, we had the girls' school on, the boys' school and the girls' school was almost on the same side. Mm -hmm. And you could see from across the way, that was the same thing that was going on. Mm. Very few um, dark faces. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, mine was an all boys school. Mm -hmm. And in a very short space of time, it was like just foreigners, mm -hmm. basically foreigners, you know, and it was a mix of what we spoke about, Caribbean, African, um, Asians, mm -hmm. 
and the, uh, the odd one or two sort of uh, English, uh, white English. Mm -hmm. And it's exactly what you're saying there is that <clears throat> it was like a cast aside. Mm -hmm. And I remember the, the, the final year, they didn't have a class for us to go into. So I heard two, overheard two teacher talking and they says, oh, what are we going to do with them? We'll have to make up another class. And one of them yeah. said, oh, let's call it 4X. Oh. And that's it. They just made up a class and call it 4X and put us all in there. And it was all awesome. foreigners. Wow. And we had no chance of taking an exam because so, you didn't put up in the stream of, of anything. So, no you know. Expectations. Low yeah. expectation. No expectation, to be honest. Not just low in a sort of sense. Mm. It's like none. Because yeah. they didn't even say, you know, you are capable of this and give you a test to prove it. So they expected to pass out in the big wide world, exactly. mm -hmm. you know. And so they're not thinking broad because oh, no. we are going to go into society. Mm. What's going to happen to society? Because we're the future. Mm. And, and if you think about it, mine was 68. It's not so long ago. No. Mm. Yeah. I re and I remember writing back to my head teacher in Jamaica. Oh, did you? Say, oh, yes, I did. I kept in touch with my head teacher and I wrote back to him and I said, oh, I'm, I'm now at school. And I told him the name of the school, John Kelly Girls High School, Nizen. And I said, you won't probably know where Nizen is in England, but if you get the map out, you might be able to pinpoint it. And I said to him, the letter is, I said, uh, most of my class are people from, from um, Ireland, from Scotland, from Wales, yes. and, right. and from England. I said, I'm, I'm one of the very few that are of the, of the dark face. I remember is, that what, is that what you wrote? Yes, oh I my did. goodness. That it was, and then he wrote back to me probably about three, you know, the letters took a longer time mm. to get here. Yeah. About three or four weeks later, he said, oh my dear Cynthia, um, I'm glad to hear that you've settled into a school, uh, but also um, to hear about your, your experience so far. <laughs> That's, that's really really good. Yes. Did, you, did you ever write? Did you ever write back or connect back as you promised? <laughs> do, do you know, Donald? One of uh, one of my regrets in life, and thankfully it's only a few, but I keep I always say this. I've got three regrets, and one of them is that for some reason I never did write back to my gran. Oh, I left it all to my mom for some reason. Yeah. My, you know, so it's my mom who kept the correspondence going. Right, right, right. And I didn't get to, when I, by the time I went back to Jamaica, years, years later, she'd passed. Mm. Oh. So I, I live with fond memories of her, but yes. very regretful that I never did write to I, her. I, I, I don't feel you're, you're on your own there, to be honest, because I, I just think it's marvellous what Cynthia did right mm. back. And I don't know, because maybe you left at a later age, an older, per, older child. Mm -hmm. I think that's got something to do with it, you know. I mean, I was 13 when I left. Mm -hmm. And you were nine, Phyllis. Nine, yeah. I mm -hmm. think that makes a difference. Yeah. Yes. Because in, in our head, I, I, I was promising people that I was going to come yeah. back. You know, and, and do <laughs> Oh, you did the same. You're going to go no, back. No, sorry, sorry. Not, not come back necessarily, but I promised I was going to write and do oh, all these I see. things. For and me, it was going back. back. I was going to. Oh, no, no, no. No. <laughs> I so much wanted to be with my mother because when I, I was really, really a bonded child to my mother, so I missed mm -hmm. her a lot. Yeah. So me going to meet her, there was no coming back. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. Very, very interesting. So yeah. how was the rest of your school life then? Was it a good one, indifferent, or, or what? Well, I can say that, you know, just picking up one link almost to what we were saying earlier. For my school years were extremely formative. In When I look back now, I realise mm. I am who I am because of the resilient person I had to become. Um, and the persevering person I had to become, both in school and through church life, which may come on later. Yeah, but yeah. just picking up a story from school in relation to what we've said. So fast forward to when I'm in sixth form at school now. Right. In, and by this I'm in Birmingham. And, oh, oh so yeah, because remember we came to Birmingham, Birmingham in 1968 when my dad moved to Birmingham. Oh, okay. To the ministerial thing, yeah. Right, right. So I'm up in school in Birmingham and so just two bits of story. So the head teacher tells my parents one of the time to say, if only we had Phyllis earlier, she would have done much better. Because by this time I'm in school, being a bit clear about what I can do, what my strength, my weakness, and I'm getting on with it. Right. So, but I had a, we had a very insightful head teacher. Okay. And she told my parents that, um, and my mom often repeats it, that the teacher, head teacher said, oh, if only we had Phyllis a year or two earlier. Wow. So I went to there and it was in the fourth year, just for doing GCSE. 
Right. But in the sixth form now, um, we had what we had in those days was careers day, mm. where somebody come in, I can't remember what they're called now in school, but they come in to talk to you about careers. And in the, in the school, we had a sixth form room where, you know, you, you could have a go at being an adult if you like. So we could make our own coffees and, you know, nice little room for six formers. Well, so we're all in there. By this time now, I'm in a secondary school, called secondary modern school. Mm. Uh, but it's a, it was a school that at one time, I believe it was a grammar school, then became comprehensive and then secondary, whatever. So it had trickle-ins of good practice. Okay. So we're in the sixth form now, in sixth form room, and um, we're all on appointments to go and see the career advisor. Now, believe you me, I, this has not left me. So we're all in the sixth form room. And as it happened now, this is 1970 or 69, 70. And so the black girls, I'm afraid the school reflected the society at large. So you've got the white girls at the other end, the black girls at one end. So we're <laughs> sat there waiting for an appointment. So each black girl come back. Oh, I'm really angry. Career advisor telling me I can go and work in a, fa in a factory. Another one come back, I can go work in a laundry. Another one come back, I can do it. I sat there and I thought to myself, I'm not going to, I'm going to go take up time in my hand to go and sit with these people telling me rubbish. I said, I'm not going. Oh. So when my time came, I just put my feet up, made myself a coffee. and thought they can sit there and wait and I sit and enjoy my coffee. I know what wow. I want to do. I know what I need to do. I don't need them to tell me anything else so they can, they can have their time. I'm having my time. And I'll never forget that. Wow. What did your teacher say? Donald, did I want to know what teachers had to say to me? <laughs> no, it's just a question because, I mean, you know, Donald, they have I was to say enjoying that? my coffee. Right. <laughs> they could do whatever they chose to do. They were yeah. not going to tell me anything wow. that I didn't want to hear. Wow. Because I knew who I was. And by that time, we, we may come to talk about the Christianity thing at that time for me. Right. But I knew I was trying to find out who I was. I wouldn't put it in those terms. All I knew, I kept saying, and people remind me of it, people can tell me how to dress, people can tell me how to speak, but people can't tell me how to think. Okay. Now, that's what I lived with from I was 16. Great, great, great. So we won't say anything more. I just enjoyed my uh coffee. All right, then. all right. So, what, so it's over to you, Cynthia. Well, then they stand that moments like that towards to, to the end of your school life. Right. So, and I think probably Phyllis, because your birthday is in September, September as well, isn't yeah. it? So we, we kind of have a, that extra year because yes. of the school year starting. Yeah. So I was in school one year longer than most people that would, their birthday ah. falls in, in from January to yeah. August. Mm -hmm. And so I remember very, uh, the, the, the final year, and we're all in the room with the head teacher. And um, she was saying, right, those who had the, uh, I think it was, they had to have three or four A levels and so many O levels to go to different. And she said, those of you who haven't had the, which, which I didn't have the whatever, it, it, what do you want to do? And he said, so I put up my hand. I said, I said, from I was, a, and I, I just said it. I said, from I was a child uh, of this, I wanted to be a teacher. And and she went quiet, never said anything. Uh, said and and I said, uh, I said to her, I will need to speak to my mom uh, about uh, my future career. And I left it at that. Mm. Didn't say another word. Wow. And then she went on to the next person and they were saying, and just like Felicia said, um, when we all met out in the playground, some of the girls were saying, I can't believe they said that to me. And, you know, that, I can't believe they said, the other two, I can't believe she said that to me. I can't believe she said that to me. And, and this was the, the, the response from how they view you as a black girl. Mm. Yes, um, yes. And because yes. I joined their school later than most people, mm. they would have gone to the uh, the the year um, six, seven, the year eight, and through the system. I joined kind of halfway in between. Mm. And if mm. this is the way they were treating people, and I was very much aware because of my older sister Lurleen, you know, she's an activist from all sides. Uh, <laughs> you know, it, it kind of she used to say to us, "You don't have to listen to what everybody tells you." You need to know for yourself mm. what you want to do, 
what you want to be. So that was ingrained in my mind mm. for quite a long time. And, and that is good, that, you know. That is good in that it's nice when you have an older sibling mm. that can give you some guidance. Uh, mm. I guess, Phyllis, you probably did not. You didn't have that? No, not 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 because I'm the eldest in my family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This but, is... um, but you see, for me, which I again I say to Christians and non-Christians, that's where for me my faith and my church community yeah. helped me, enabled me. So right. in a broader sense, I've been mentored by people who were who wouldn't have used those terms and it wouldn't mm. have been formal, but I could see pictures or images or mm -hmm. examples of people who were getting on with life or be, being, being, you know, fulfilling their purpose. That, that, so I wouldn't really use those language, but I yeah. had those references. <laughs> that's an interesting know. point, a very yeah. interesting point. Because mm. um, also sometimes we look at our parents as well, don't we? And we take mm. example from them and, and we follow yeah. Not always, because yeah. sometimes we become rebellious mm -hmm. against, against what yeah. our parents mm. want us to do, mm. right? So did you guys know what you wanted to do or was it very much something that you thought about later as to where you ended up? I think for me, it was um, almost incremental. I was, I didn't, I didn't start off by saying I wanted to be a teacher, but then looking back, I can realize how I've become a teacher. Okay. <laughs> because as a child, I used to line up my, my siblings and they had to be my students. <laughs> I bet they enjoyed that, right? <laughs> <laughs> it was just so funny. And my sister, my second sister became a, just, I mean, she, in the early days, she was a nurse. We all had to be sick so she could treat us. <laughs> <laughs> and you go through the whole family and, you know, we all look back to what we're doing now. You can go back to our childhood days to see how actually, without being consciously yeah. aware, yeah, we, yeah. we had the passion or the compassion and the inkling to whatever it is that we're doing now. But I remember, I used to love it. Yeah, line them all up and teach them. Yeah, and, well, well, and when you say line them all up, um, how many well, siblings? they had to sit on the ground in the garden. Yeah, yeah. How many siblings did you have, though? Oh, it, don't forget I'm the eldest of 10. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> but this was but from my early years, when we, when I was, you know, a kid sitting yeah. in primary school. Right, 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 you know, right, with, right. And with Joy, my second sister, we all had to be sick and should get leaves, you know. That, those were the sort of, um, what do you call it? To put on your whatever is supposed to be hurting, the least would be the plaster. <laughs> how many I've siblings did you have? I'm just, I was just asking Cynthia how many siblings right. did she have? Right. So while whilst was in my junior years in Jamaica, it was just myself and my cousin that were left with our grandparents. Right. But then our neighbours was just across the road from us, and they had two sets of twins, and it was about seven of them. Mm -hmm. So what I used to do, you know, under the cellar, our house was quite yeah. high up. Yeah. So on the weekend, we used to get my neighbor's kids from all over the road on underneath the cellar. And we, used to, and we used to have school. Mm -hmm. So and then I, so I was I was the teacher. of course. Mm -hmm. Oh, from, from then? Oh, yes. Yeah, so we we, we it, and that was part of our um, playtime. Yeah. We didn't see it very serious, mm -hmm. but then you know, I, I was teaching. We would give them, ask them questions, ask them to add up different things, <laughs> yeah. ask them to say different. So that's where my thought in love of that type of stuff came from. And from a very early age, we used to attend um, in our district. We had a Baptist church at the one end of the district, and the Moravian church right where the school was mm. so i used to go to the moravian church with my grandmother and and from a very early if i can remember and i'm trying to think whether i was about nine or ten mm. i was i was the sunday school secretary mm -hmm. right. from that so for me taking on responsibility was very very early mm. in my in my growing up Right. And you just roll through it, don't you? Because look at all yes, the secretarial exactly. work that you've done across the board now. Yeah, well, this is it. And, and it's so amazing. I'm thinking about it. And I'm thinking, wow, I had that level of responsibility. So the responsibility was to make sure all the registers were done, all the money, all the, all the Sunday school offering was collected. Mm. It was checked not just by myself, but the, the, uh, the superintendent of the Sunday school that would check the offering and make sure it was correct. So mm. that type of responsibility. I'm sure I must have been about 
Because it was between nine and eleven. You at know. such a young age. At such, at such a, a young age. Yeah. Oh, that's but, excellent. Uh, if you know the districts, you've got Spaldings, you've got White Shop, then you've got Reaches, then you've got Bell Carries, then you've got Cumberland, and then you go over into Manchester now for the other district. So it wasn't a very, very big, very, very big, big place. So right. for us, um, the congregation probably be about 40, probably. Yeah, but that. That's still a good responsibility. Yes, yes. That, uh, such a, such a, and it was, it was a church school. It was right. a church, it, it was part of the Moravian church. Uh, um, so, so, so moving forward then, did you both become teachers as such? Well, I did. I did and I've gone on to, you know, teachers become my world. You know, okay. so I'm often described now as a Pentecostal education. Oh, okay. Person, yeah. right. And then I went on to, uh, when I left I uh, with school, I went into banking. Mm -hmm. Oh, did you? Uh, oh, yeah. Well, I, I applied for, um, you've heard about Cooch, Cooch and Company. Cooch and Company is the Royal Bankers. So I went, oh. to, I went to an interview with Cooch. I went Bank of England and Barclays Bank. Mm. I didn't get the one at Cooch. Uh, I got the one at Bank of England and got Barclays. I chose Barclays because from where we were lived in, in Kensal Rise, the, the, the direct bus link to Palmal. You've heard of Palmal in London? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So the number six bus took me from where I live straight to Palmal. So I took the Barclays one. All and right, then so you've done all secretarial work across the church, haven't you, Cynthia? Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. from a young age, then you were dealing with finance and right Oh, yeah, to... yeah. I used to manage the, the five, you heard of the, the banana company, Fives. You see, sometimes you buy bananas and you call yeah, it FYF. Yeah. Yes, so I used to manage their account. Mm. Wow. It, from the Palmol branch. And then yeah. when I got married, then I moved to the one in, used to be on Villa Road, Barclays and Villa Road. Mm. Then they move from Villa Road, and now it's this the one in uh, Soho Road. So that's another story, then. So that's another story. <laughs> Phyllis, then, Phyllis, you moved when you were young, still school, from London to Birmingham. Yeah, because my dad then got transferred from London Church to Hanswith Church, and I was All fourteen right. then. All right, and then Cynthia, you moved with, uh, at a late as an adult, was it? You moved to Birmingham. I moved as, as an adult from from London to Birmingham in seventy one. When you got married, wasn't it? When so, I got married, yeah. Oh, I and see. And then I became familiar now with, with the, not just Pastor Thompson, but with the whole of the Thompson family. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. People, yeah. Forgetting oh, that. that, forgetting our geographical and family links. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But in always, that sense, mum always yeah. talked about your older sister, and we'd never forget your mum. And my mum, exactly. But in terms of the the links that we established just a while ago yeah it was there but not at the forefront yeah yeah, yeah. It, it, it's amazing the link isn't it it is it is well, i call it the path of life i do as well and just listening to cynthia's story and i say it to myself and to young people now when i talk to them you know that the world or ourselves might put different labels on us but i think i really do firmly believe we're born with we've all got a call in a sense of purpose yes and it gets revealed and developed in different ways. And yes. most of us can look back, we look back and we can understand how we've become who we are. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Because of the and it, it's, it's a question I ask, right? Mm -hmm. If you had a choice mm -hmm. to see the map of life with a bright light shining the way ahead, mm -hmm. would you choose that? Or would you like life to unveil as it is now? Mm -hmm. where every day you get up and you don't know what's going to happen. What would you choose? Well, Donald, uh, it's interesting. I've just been doing some thinking and writing recently. And one of the things that has become kind of very clear to me is I, I say to myself, how did I manage to get where I am now? Right. Because I would never have dreamt. And if I went by, certainly if I went by some of the experience in school, I wouldn't be where I am now. Oh, so if I was to look at to see where I am now, I think I would have just gone into a corner. Okay. Because okay. I just I would have felt totally inequipped, totally enabled. But I, I couldn't. It. But I then again, it. for me, that's where my faith comes in and my own discipleship right. experience of God makes a big difference. Because I do believe that we can all become, and it and for me it's whatever level. We might, you know, society might put different labels on different things, but the main thing for me, we can all become fulfilled. 
Yes, yes, and, yes. You know, yeah, in, yeah. in who we are, whether it's whether it's somebody says, oh, well, without comparing ourselves with other people, just fulfilled, just being who we are, we can all become, and we're all in the process of becoming. So I'd rather go through the process of becoming because when you look over there, you think, I, can, I could never do it. And you wait, one would waste energy <laughs> saying, I can't. <laughs> rather and, use and, the energy saying I can so becoming is much more interesting interesting absolutely and, and Cynthia that, that, that question that's a question to you yeah and and sometimes I'm thinking to myself and I look back on my earlier years mm -hmm. and thinking well this what I did then I didn't know what it was setting me up for yeah okay and and I couldn't sometimes you think well why didn't I take that path? And I'm thinking, no, that path was never in your hand to take. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is where you need to be. Mm -hmm. Yes, you would have liked to have done some more academical studies and you need to do mm -hmm. some more, but where you are now, you mm -hmm. can see your actual, you, you can see from the beginning, this mm -hmm. is where your path meant to be. And you can and celebrate that. That's a good word you. that you've used there, Phyllis, becoming. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Becoming. Yeah. And, and, and so I have no regrets in what mm. I've done, where I've mm. been, and, and what is in store, because I really don't know. Absolutely. And, and you know, I, like I said, I ask people the question all the time. Mm. And some people jump in straight away and said, yeah, 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 I'd like to see where I'm going. But uh, <laughs> yeah. and I opened it up a bit more and I said, look, you know, that, that it's not always going to be good because mm -hmm. you're going to see life as it is. Absolutely. And, and then people change their mind. What, what I'm thinking of now is us back in the days as youngsters in church, mm -hmm. right? Because they... That's another story, Donald. <laughs> <laughs> Donald, the first thing I say to the answer, thank God for Jesus. Hello, I've got a gone mad, cracked up half the time. <laughs> Why are you laughing, oh, Cynthia? Goodness. <laughs> oh, dear. That's just what I say as well. Dear Lord Jesus. Well, I mean... <laughs> we made it. We made yeah. it. <laughs> We made it. We got through it. Don't know how. Exactly. But we made but it. we did it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know, but for the grace. Exactly. And, 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 and as you know, I spoke to some of the other youngsters, as in Carver and, and Tony. Yeah. Sharing the experience, I guess, from a boy's point of view. <laughs> right? And it was very interesting because... I think you've probably seen the, 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 the recording. Yes. We all go through life at different ages and we're experiencing life. And sometimes you don't know what people are thinking of you. Mm. And when you hear it later on, you think, what? Because you're just getting on with life, right? Yes. And you're probably thinking about the people above you. You want to aspire to them or whatever. Yes. But when you hear what people are thinking of you afterwards, because Carpa was like saying things like, you see you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, and things like, and I'm thinking, I never even knew that. No. You know? You just so get your life. <laughs> yes, you are. And I guess you guys are, are, are the same, um, getting on with life, looking at the, the elderly people, mm. as in women and girls and whatever, mm -hmm. and, and, and seeing how they get on with their, doing their thing. Yeah. And, and of course, you had mother such and such who was watching you. And for the <laughs> watching the capital W. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear Jesus! <laughs> Is there anything you want to tell us, Willie? How long have we got? <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> oh look! Oh, oh dear, goodness. I don't know. Oh, we're not going to begin, Donald. I know. Like, I mean, now I can, at least I can laugh now. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's it, I can laugh. I mean, it was, but again. For me, a reflection, mm. um, all of that helped me to, I think, um, mm. it's that it, all the experiences which I'm not, time will allow me to share half of them, but mm. they've allowed me to become, I think really, when I think seriously about it, allowed me to become a lot more insightful, understanding, have empathy mm. for some of the older folks. And, and I do seriously mean watch me for capital W, and yes. I'll spell the rest of the letters in capital letters as well. <laughs> <laughs> One time, I was, at, I was at a church and I was doing my first degree. And this mother came up to me and said, mm-hmm, <laughs> I'm collecting the degrees out there. <laughs> <laughs> and she went into one. 
about getting the degrees and losing the degrees of, of grace within, within my <laughs> discipleship. So, you know, it's like I was spending more time on getting the degrees out there that have no relevance for life. And of losing the degree of the, the degree of my spirituality yes. in that process. And I just had to stand in and listen. And just listen. <laughs> because I knew that there's no way I'd be able to, A, I wouldn't have the language to yes. argue with her in any sensible way that she'd listen. Mm. And B, she had no time to listen to me anyway, because... <laughs> Listen, before I move on to Cynthia with this, Phyllis, <laughs> being the daughter of Don't even pastor. go there, Donald. You don't want to hear. <laughs> all right, all right. I don't know. Story. <laughs> Donald, let me put this one on record. Let me put this one on record. You wouldn't know. A girlfriend of mine, often, we often laugh at this because she knows you. Right. You would know this. What, and Cynthia, you will laugh because you, you'll both remember hands of the old hands of church. Oh, God. Right? Yes. Maybe I shouldn't even put this on record. We might have to cut it out, Dodo, but let me yes. just tell you both. So this one Sunday, Cynthia, you know, we used to have the choir. Yeah. The choir and the left hand side. So, yeah. As a pastor's kid, you see, what some of the guys told me, they couldn't talk to me because they're scared of my dad and we get into trouble. So, I, I appreciate that they understood because I'd get, let alone they get into trouble, I get into trouble for talking to them. So, I couldn't talk to the boys. So, the boys knew they couldn't talk to me because they get into trouble. So, we, <laughs> we understood that. But poor Donald, he wouldn't know this. So Donald and Tony, actually, the two of you got me into trouble. So anyway, we were on the choir. We moved from the choir. So Cynthia, you know the space between the altar and the first pew? Yeah. We yeah. had the table. Yes. Right? Yeah. So my question is to my close girlfriend. I says, how can you get pregnant standing in front of the church between the pew and the altar? <laughs> how can you get pregnant? So, when I tell you, they can tell me what to wear, tell me what to do, but they can't tell me how to think. Because I know you can't get pregnant standing between the pew and there. So, anyway, after church, I think Donald and Tony must have, I, this is when I talked to my girlfriend, I said, they must have took pity on me. And so they came talking to me because the boys thought you should talk to me, you see. And this other girl who I shared this, we have a laugh because she's a pastor's kid as well. So, we All have right. a good laugh on this. Okay. So, she understands and we have a good laugh every time, especially when we want to go and over the past. So, we stood yeah. there. And you and Tony kindly talked to me. I felt so proud of myself that at least two boys were talking to me. Is that right? By the time I get home, <laughs> Lord of the Sabbath. <laughs> My mum was leaving at church. <laughs> My mum was leaving at church. But somehow she knew, me in quotes now, I could be pregnant because two boys were talking to me. No. <laughs> I got it told off that, you know, after church and this and the other and the other and the other. I stood there because I couldn't argue with my mum, otherwise, you know, what would have happened? Yes, yes. So I just stood and listened and said to myself, well, I, to myself, I know that you don't get pregnant standing between P and R to talk to two young men <laughs> who want to talk to you. So they can tell me what to do. They can tell me how to dress. But they can't tell me how to do <laughs> But so me and my friend, I won't mention any name because you know her as well. Anytime we want to have a good laugh. We pick up that's my story. We pick up and then we pick up another story of hers. Oh my god. And you know, this is amazing to get that. So kind thank of you for after all these years, Donald. Thank you for letting me fit, giving me that moment of feeling normal. Oh. But no, thank you for letting me go. I'm gonna get into trouble. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, that's amazing. Well, wow. yeah, there you go. So don't ask me anything more about being a pastor's kid. Uh, no, all right, all right, all right, all right. You can ask Cynthia. Uh, Cynthia, what, 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 well, what can you share with us? Well, <laughs> well in, in, in the early days, of, well, of course, my mom was the pastor at my land. Yeah. And there wasn't very many young people. It was kind of, I was the older one. Mm -hmm. uh, Faye had left by then. Um, so it was like people like Davey was the, like the... the, the, the children, young people, mm -hmm. children. Yeah. So there wasn't very many. But then the, the, the church then was tagged on to the Willsden district. And because we lived actually walking distance of Willsden church, mm -hmm. I used to go to Willsden uh, for the, the, young, the youth night, uh, anything that was going on in the week, we went to Willsden. So people like myself and uh, the late Joel, uh, and, and um, there was quite a few of us that grew up together. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and my recollection is um, around, uh, yes, some of the stuff that you just said, uh, 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 um, Phyllis, but my recollection really was about going to youth convention. Mm 
Mm -hmm. Oh, and yes. Into that minibus from Wilsden. And um, the late brother Anthony, he, he was a van driver. But, and if there were six young women, there would be six adult young women sitting in the van. Mm -hmm. And if there was, and, if, and the boys, yeah? Mm -hmm. And we would be sat in between two of those older women. <laughs> I'll never forget it. Oh, never man. forget it. And that van probably would own about, it was like a 17 seater. Yes. Mm -hmm. So yes. if the six young women was there, trust me, there was the adult women there with us as well. Just to drive from Wilson to 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 um to to Leicester, to Leicester the youth convention. Right. Honestly, it was it was ridiculous. And, and then when we got there, and because remember in those early days, we used to stay at people's homes. Yeah. Before they had the the, the university complex. Campus. Yeah. So yeah, you would be hive off to sister so and so, and only you took it. It was a It was it was that such is. a. It, 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 honestly. And then you had, when you got back to, when you got to the campus, you had to report to, I have come trying to remember the name of the sister, um, two sisters that we had to report to, to say that we're here. And they would watch us throughout the whole of the youth convention. Capital W. Right, so, so, so let me just come in there. Cause okay. you know, East, West, North and everybody would come to Leicester, Yeah. yeah. right? So we from Birmingham as well went to Leicester and you from London came up. And it was somebody's birthday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. <laughs> and only recently, and when I say recently, I'm talking last year, mm. I learned what happened. We had a birthday impromptu party mm -hmm. in the university block in one of the rooms, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And somebody showed me the photo of it last year. And I didn't even, I said, who is that? They say to you. And said, <laughs> right? I said, and then I said, who is that next to me? And they said, Gene Kennedy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and um Rose Gunn mm -hmm. and a few others. I'm sure they won't mind me mentioning the names. Mm -hmm. But there we were with this little cake, because it was her birthday, mm -hmm. and somebody took a photo with a cake, right? It's Jean's birthday. Mm -hmm. The trouble we got into. <laughs> Well, they got into the, the, the wills then on the London lot because I didn't even know that until last year. Mm. Even the youth club closed down <laughs> <laughs> because of what went on. And yeah. somebody, I think, knocked on the door. I mean, you know, we, we were so innocent in our minds, in mm. our head, just having this, you know, it's a 16th birthday yeah. uh, and blah, 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 blah. And the, whoever it was, I think as a lady came back and you can imagine what mm. they were thinking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Us boys and girls in a room mm. or whatever. And it was amazing. The mm. story I got told about what yeah. happened afterwards. It went back to the church and yeah. from the church to the youth club. And the youth club was, I think, mm. was closed down because of it and blah, 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 blah. And, and that's the story around there. And that's why I say at the time, I wouldn't have called, I wouldn't have known the word empathy. But mm. what I, I remember distinctly Stories like those used to trouble me in a way. And I'm thinking, why? Where's the trust? Don't they respect yes. people? Don't they realize that we've got sense as well? These go through my head. Yes, yes. And then yes, I yes, can yes. tell you, you might have to again, what do you call it, erase this out from the recording. Edit, edit. Edit it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But what, but I remember actually, I was sat in hands of church. And yeah, you might need to erase to take this out. Mm. And I remember like almost every, so this was after 68, between 68 and 70 around about that time because we just moved to premium like almost every other year or every other month or whatever somebody's child would come up from jamaica all right the church and it's not the mom and dad's child it's i'm mm. the mom's child so i remember sitting there thinking this is odd and i this to this day i i remember sitting in hands of church thinking that's why they're being yes. so protective Yes. There's their own problems. Yes. Bothering yes. Them. I <laughs> yes. was 16, I'm telling yes. you. Mm. I was 16. Yes. And that's when the penny dropped for me. Yes. And I began to understand. And to tell the truth, I then began to feel almost sorry for these older folks. Yes. That's where this that's where the whole issue's coming from. Yes. It's not about yes. how they really want to treat us, but they're trying to yes. protect us from their own problems. Exactly. Absolutely. And that's Absolutely. Exactly. 
That's very absolutely. Important. It's great to share these moments because yeah. you know, as you grow up, you don't see it, but later on, when you talk about it, you can see that we all went through yeah. that, that that particular thing. And like you say, you forgive them because in yeah. some cases it, they don't know any better because no. they're just they're trying to see us they're trying to be protective. Yes, yeah. and they see and, 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 themselves and, and, in us. And you yes. always wonder why are they behaving in this way? That's right. Yeah. And you're so right, Phyllis. Mm -hmm. They're they're looking at their own past and thinking, yes. I don't want them to be here. That's right. But it, if only sometimes the conversation had taken place. Yes. 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 It would yes. have been so much make so a lot of it difference. Would have done. Yes, and because think, you know, Phyllis, Phyllis, talk about getting in trouble. Mm -hmm. As youngsters, we we know you try to be gentlemen. Mm -hmm. And if there was a another a girl, say, going home on her own. Yeah. Like me and Tony, because we're best of friends, we'd yeah. say, "Okay, don't walk on your own. We'll walk you on." And, and they would see, so, they'd see a totally different picture. Yes. 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 Helpful. Yes. The girl has been safe, yeah. and then, well, my my language at the time, and then they think <laughs> they're walking down the road. <laughs> oh yeah. God! It's so yeah. sad, isn't it? So, so, and then so the other thing is, you see, talking about past the skin, which is another thing, mm. and it and it replicated as Cynthia shared from from your experience, Cynthia. What would have happened as well is that. You got your minister, you, you know, the, your parent is a minister mm. before the responsibility of the church. The youth leader is trying to be innovative in doing mm -hmm. the young people forward. And the two cannot understand that they're on the same, they're really doing the same thing. They're trying to help. So you get caught betwixt and between because you can't go to youth camp, you can't go to the <laughs> birthday party, you can't go to this, you can't sit where you want to sit in the van. Yeah, exactly. Oh You're my goodness. Stuck. That, that, that's you no, hit, no, you hit, you hit we're, not this time. we're talking about past the skid. <laughs> that's when I said, Thank God for Jesus, otherwise, we'd have gone mad. <laughs> Is it here? We'd have caught you yeah, because the pastor's got at the, at the agenda that look, I have to keep not just my children, but the chain, yeah. but just the church safe. Yeah. yeah, oh my goodness, and, and, and the poor and, youth leader trying to bring things forward for the young people, yeah, yes, yes, in the middle. Yeah, big time because you you hit something there that's really really relevant as uh, mm -hmm. part of the youth growing up, and that's the youth camp. Oh, oh God! <laughs> that was another story. Oh my God! You oh. lot wouldn't know how lucky you lot were to be able to go to youth camp. The rest of us had to say, "Oh, I'm waiting to hear what happened." Well, I yeah. tell you, from and, the and London, from the London region, yeah. there was three of us. There was me, my brother Lloyd, yeah. and for um, what's the name, Benjamin. From I think Perlene. it was Collier. Yeah, from I think it was it, it Freud that went to at the time. Perlene Benjamin. Perlene was it? Oh yeah. right. Yeah, there's only three of us from London. Yeah. That went to the first youth camp. Let's, there, let's do the language. Youth camp. Youth camp. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean youth camp? What do you And the only reason why I got to go to the youth camp. My older sister Lernie says, Mother, she she's not long in this country. Let her see what goes on. Let her let her experience some of what is is, uh, is the church is about. And That's I how I got to go. All right, I'm going to send Lloyd as well. <laughs> I'm just about to say, Sydney, I can take him All right, Lloyd going as well. You yes. can. Lloyd is going. <laughs> Lloyd got to keep an eye. <laughs> so, so, so who was Lloyd? Who was Lloyd? My brother. Oh, I see. No, no, okay, to be a okay. It couldn't be anybody like yeah. you and Tony. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so this youth camp was that in Wales? No, no, no that was the one that you that would have gone to. No, but, but the, there were different youth camps. You see, that's what I'm saying. No, so the were... first, the first youth camp was in Whitby Church. Yeah. Ah, so that ah. was with with Bishop Pastor Kane. Yes. Um, the uh, youth camp, Brooks. What's his name now? He's passed away. Uh, Butner. Yeah. And and his Josh assistant Gordon. and jo Josh Gordon. Yeah. That was the first youth camp. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, no, there were others because we went to Wales. And, and then then sort of us so. then and youth camp yeah. came. Yeah. Kind it happened annually. Yeah. Well, but the yeah, next, yeah, yeah. And then the next one was the um, what's it called now? Keep in touch. In the keep in touch. Oh, that was and another then, one. Especially when we had to, yeah. when we dressed up. I mean, that was something else. <laughs> that was a, that, that, that's another youth camp. <laughs> Honestly. And, because and, from from the from the first youth camp, those people um, who went to the first youth camp, we were able to go to Switzerland to the European yeah. youth camp in Switzerland. So that oh, when, when Iva, that when Iva, um, myself, um, uh, um, 
oh gosh, I can't remember all the names now. Yeah. We went to, to Switzerland to the youth camp. Okay, I, I didn't, I didn't know I that. Oh well, yeah, and then I've lot. I think yeah. the Sheffield lot were able to go. Yeah, the third the youth camp, but. You know, it was it was a very good experience. Yeah, being there, and I'm not saying this, so Phyllis. I know you didn't. I don't think you got to go to any, did you? Of course, I didn't go to any of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, but right, I must what? say, later on, you see, who would yeah. who would have been organising the keep? What's it called again now? The keep in touch. You could keep in touch. <laughs> they know they could put it in my safe hands. Right. So, so in, later in, in organizing it, then did you actually get to go? Oh, so what did keep in touch mean? What did what did that mean? Well, no, these people who went to camp, right? By this time, it's all national, isn't it? So they had all this group yeah. of people who went to camp, or what have you? And right. so by this time, again, going back to the whole thing about just like the whole journey, going back to your question about becoming who we are, yeah. Then things like that was in my hands, isn't it? So organizing things like oh, that. Right. Yeah. I, could, I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know any of that. No, you wouldn't, would you? No, oh, my God, there's a lot of history here. <laughs> we, just do, we just do these things, and the Lord knows the journey, isn't it? So I wouldn't have liked to go back to not being able to do things, but it taught me so I yes. could then bring a range of people on board because I know the stories. Wow. That and is then, absolutely amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Well, that's so, our God. <laughs> looking at adult life now. Um, <laughs> that God reached there. <laughs> We yes, we, again, we, we branch out, don't we? We just yeah. branch out into a big wide world in terms of, you know, a profession, mm -hmm. family, and all that sort of thing. Um, you know, so Cynthia, you moved here, you got married. Um, in 71. 71. I remember that occasion, but I, I, I was away around the world with, you know, being in the forces mm -hmm. and all that. So I, I, wasn't, I wasn't there for that. But I can remember distinctly getting all the, the, you know, because back in the day, it's a big thing, isn't it? When, you know, boy meets girl and mm -hmm. getting married and all that sort of thing. It's still a big yeah. thing, Donald. <laughs> <laughs> we, won't lose, we won't lose the significance of boy meets girl, girl meets girl. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I mean? <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist that. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. So, you know, but it's a fantastic. I know for me, uh, th there's a gap, right? Because I left when I was 18 and I guess you guys probably kept more of a in that loop than myself. And that's why some of the things that you're talking about, I don't remember any of it because I've never heard about connecting, mm -hmm. whatever you call that, connecting people. Yeah, yeah, so so I miss out on that. So because I left in 70, in the end of 69, 70, I, I miss a whole lot mm -hmm. for the next 30 odd years mm -hmm. coming back. So it's interesting that you guys could have a different conversation. Mm -hmm. um, with yourself about what happened because I heard so much about the development of the church going in different directions and etc. Mm -hmm. A lot of positives, of course. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. that's what the church is all about. Mm -hmm. and, but I'm always thankful for <clears throat> my youthful days in learning from you know the, 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 the faith because I took that with me. You can't not take it with you because you know that's that's what your life is all about. But when we look back at times like this, you know, there's the laughs. Mm. and see how our folks looked at us and judged us <laughs> not yeah. for the right reasons yeah. you know <clears throat> but meaning well mm -hmm. you know so how do you say your career are you are you are you sort of full, feel fulfilled with your career and all of that so mm. would you say your career how do you oh, say yeah. now as was waiting simply to go ahead of me but now for me which again going back to the whole thing about becoming donald and mm. i feel you know the the understanding of who I am and what part I can play in individual or the corporate life of mm. Christians, not necessarily just our denomination. Mm. Um, I'm grateful for for the experience that I've had in life. So just going back to, to give an example, you know, okay, with all the angst, but also the funny side of not being able to go to the youth camps and the goodness knows what. Um, in my own growth and development, I have been engaged in youth work. So in the end, I was taking young people to the Caribbean. So, oh, really? Oh, yes, as part of my own work with youth work, because I then wow. became a youth director myself. And in my office now, I've got um, a picture, for example, of some young people who went, took young people to Jamaica, took young people to Barbados. When, in, and in Jamaica and Barbados, we're taking them to meet in Jamaica, we didn't meet the primaries. We met Barbados that we 
we're meeting with the Prime Minister for our young people. And That's it's fantastic. Just young people saying, when they look at the beauty of the Caribbean, they're saying, but well, why did our parents leave all this to go to England? <laughs> and the opportunity to talk with them about the reasons for migration and yeah. them to have the conversation we were saying earlier that they never, for all kinds of reasons, had with their parents. Because mm. parents, you know, for all the reasons that yeah. those conversations did not happen in many, many, many families. Yes. Um, but so, so from building on the camps that I couldn't go to for all the reasons that we've talked about and more, yeah. I was able to draw from that when I was in a position to do something about it, to take people, young people across to different parts of the world to have the experience that I never had, but I'm in a position to help them to make sense of it. That is fantastic. Uh, yeah, so, and things like the keeping in touch, I wasn't able to go to the camp, but here I was I organizing events, an annual event for people who had met on the youth camps right. to come to a day. It was a beautiful day, wasn't it, the way we planned it? Not just the way I planned it, but the way the, the events emerged. Right. In right. that we'd have the day, the time when people could have the kind of conversations we're having now and make try to make sense of their experience. We right. had a lovely banquet in the evening, which was fantastic. What? You know? Oh, yes. And people would really dress up for it. So then you'd call us Lady Cynthia and Lady Phyllis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. Call it Lady Cynthia and Lady Phyllis anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, in terms of the sort of things I do now, both ecumenically and not just for our church, you know, mm. it's all because it's that journey that the Lord has enabled me to take, that I'm able to do what I am and I'm sure Cynthia's got her own story as a range of other people yeah yeah and 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 for me although I had a, an awareness from quite an early age mm. of my giftings mm -hmm. skills that need I had what obviously needed to be developed mm -hmm. I I always say to people and I, I think I had a conversation with some younger people some weeks ago and I said to them I said look I will be forever grateful for the to the church mm -hmm. for the platforms and the privileges I've had mm -hmm. to grow those giftings and develop those skills mm -hmm. in in terms of leadership, in terms of of leading other people to do things in, in terms of supporting, mm -hmm. um, and I will never take that away from where I've come through the church system. Mm -hmm. Yes, you've got your own uh, um, abilities to do whatever you do in the corporate world. Mm -hmm. But some of the other skills that you do really developed, I think that personally, I think the church has given us a platform, mm -hmm. whether it was 20 people in the room, but you had to stand up and you had to give a presentation or you had to speak, it's still, it's still something mm -hmm. to me. Like, then you've got 200 people. Then yeah. you've got a thousand awesome. people. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. you still mean. So it doesn't matter how small the group of people was. It could have been five young people. But it gave me that, uh, uh, um, that, that opportunity to share not just my faith, but other things with that group. Mm. And it's just built on, built on. So I will never take away from the, my faith and my church mm. what it has helped me to achieve. Over time. Excellent. Yeah, I, I, I've I always think, said that. And even thinking, Cynthia, just taking up, I mean, you're a multi skilled person, but just pick up one thing in terms of practical stuff um, that you may not even think about how you've impacted other women or other people. You know, you've got your skills, your catering skills, which maybe when you started, maybe cooking just for your family. Now, when you think of prepare, you know, organizing catering for over 2,000 people, at our national event, which for you is you're doing it like with your eyes closed. Somebody right. looking at you and knowing and seeing what you've done and seeing what you're doing, it's, getting, it's making them think, well, if Cynthia can do it, maybe I can do it. And Absolutely. you're just doing what's normal for you, but it's speaking loudly to yeah. a range of other people. And that is a yeah. perfect position to be in. Yeah, Absolutely. And you, and you kind of say to you, you can be who you want to be, Absolutely. but you've got to know you, you've got to know you. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and your potential. Yes, not be competing, just being who you are, and that's yeah. why I go back. Keep saying, Donald, when you say whatever got you, you ask the question. I'm saying to see where I am now, and I can say the same for Cynthia and a range of other people and yourself. To see where we are now, you think, how did I get here? Yeah, mm. because mm. you wouldn't have. I certainly wouldn't have thought I'd be where I am now. Mm. Fantastic. Had you not been hard. I, I, I think I think this is also beautiful because. 
you talk about the church and I really see it as a very good moral grounding, mm. you know, give you that moral guidance and acceptance in life because going out in the big wide world, you can see how some people are. They just haven't got that morality, oh. you know, and all that. And I really thank the church for that. Mm. And then looking at the way you guys, the career path that you guys have taken and, and you're talking about the catering thing there, Cynthia, it's just... And that's I mean, one of the, the things that Cynthia does. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's a kitchen there, isn't it? Is there, is there, is there a, a few... Uh, um, a charity thing uh, oh so um we've got well i've got a couple of charities on the on the move at the moment we've got the villa cross soup kitchen which is now an enterprise we just wow. really we just started serving soup and bread on a tuesday for the homeless we've gone bigger than that now mm. we've got we've had uh, and you have some awards, awards awards for that do you yeah we got five awards now from the police from the local community from different places and we just seen that expanding we now we we're joining with the west midlands west birmingham nhs and we're doing some work with them around vaccination take up and so on fantastic uh, <laughs> so we so we expand we've expanded that and and that's and for me it's not about me mm. Mm. it's about taking our church at our church in the bigger wide world and all yes, the individuals exactly. who are working with you on that as well, what that's meaning for them in their own development. Yes, exactly, exactly. So I'm, I'm meeting new people. I've been in sex at around tables and I never think I would sit around. Mm. I'm talking to people who don't even know their business so well, but mm. I'm there, um, you know, making a contribution. And we've got um, the Shape Women's Refuge. Yes, it was started through um, Reverend Millicent's tenure. Mm -hmm. But now we are no, we, now we have, I mean, it was amazing. Lockdown came and we thought, oh my God, how are we going to survive? I made an application to Lloyds Bank and wow, they're funding us, providing us with consulting support for two years. Mm -hmm. Wow. I meet with a consultant every once, every six weeks to do different things. So. You know, it's it's about where you sit at mm -hmm. the time and what impact you make mm -hmm. because it is the legacy. What are you leaving behind? Absolutely, absolutely. What lives are you touching? You know, and and hence the reason for setting up this organization mm -hmm. um, called the Forgotten Generations. Mm -hmm. I see that we really need to tell people about us and what we do mm -hmm. from the point of view of being role models, examples mm -hmm. to the youngsters. Mm -hmm. You know, because who knows what we do? Absolutely. Yeah. And sometimes we're not even aware of the impact Absolutely. and the influence Absolutely. that we have on individuals until they tell us or conversations like this, you know, where you're... Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And when, when I record things like this, I, the first thing I do uh, is I say to people, share this with your siblings, mm -hmm. your children, your grandchildren, mm -hmm. your whoever, your colleagues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I can tell you, there will be mouths open, goes, what? I did not know that, mm -hmm. right? And when we've got our youngsters out there, some of them are so misguided <clears throat> mm -hmm. and lack of focus, to hear that people like you and me and others have achieved something like what we've achieved, mm -hmm. and sometimes we look back and say, well, how did we do that? Mm -hmm. You know, we've got to tell them that there's a way ahead for them, mm -hmm. positive, mm -hmm. you know? And that's what I love about this. Yeah, and what I do as well, Donald, which, and I see my siblings doing the same thing, but I certainly have done it, is that I make it a, I make a conscious effort to share all my successes with my parents, father's gone now, bless his soul, yes. and other older folks who I feel have influenced me in a certain way. So yeah. if, if I've written something and it's published, I say to them, this is the result of what you've, how you've enabled me, or Excellent. I've done a lecture, or I've done whatever it is I've done, Excellent. I'm on this committee or I've done whatever it is. Mm. I say, I've done this and it's a result of what you have said to me. You've, one of the days you might've said, keep going Phyllis or whatever it is, mm. I can link yes. my achievement with their lives. So it's a way of being gratitude. You know, and, and that's very yeah. important because I, I yeah. bet they appreciate that. Oh, very much so. And then it makes me feel better because I'm also yes. recognizing it's not just, it's not about me, it's about our community. Yes. And it's wider than just the black community. It's about how our humanity, how we should live. Absolutely. Recognizing that we're where we are because mm. somebody's shoulder has been yeah. available to us to stand on. And, and, and somebody made that. that made that time. 
Absolutely. To feed, to, feed, to, to, to sow into Pour into you. us, yeah. And pour into us, yeah. 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 I, I, I absolutely love all of this because there's so many different variables out there in life. Mm. And all our youngsters fit in those variables mm -hmm. and they need guidance. Yeah. You know, whether they want to be a musician, whether mm. they want to be a pastor, whatever yeah. they want to do in life. And if we can help them along the way by so important. sharing yeah. whatever we can with them to give them a better sort of mm. rock. In other words, if they can climb on our shoulders rather than making Absolutely. mistakes and, that we, and, we have made. And not to forget that all things are possible. Absolutely. Yes. You, yes. you know, if you think, well, you know, I can only write two lines, write your two lines. Yes. yes. It will add to somebody else's Absolutely. five lines. Absolutely. And before you know, you've got a book. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, and, a and, term that I tend to use these days, um, it was really ushered, I don't know where he got it from, but really ushered many years ago, used it, and I've used it all the time, the whole word, one another in. One another in, yes. And one I another. use it within the secular and the sacred, if, it, if one can separate the two. Yeah. But I use it all the time with people that the whole thing for me, is be the change we want to be, we want to see in society. Yeah. Again, mm -hmm. for me, that's Christian. People uh, put it to Mahatma Gandhi. But for me, that's biblical. Mm -hmm. Be the change you want to be. And yeah. another word of way of looking at that is the one another in. And if we can yeah. one another each other, yeah. we make the world Everybody, a better place. Yeah. Everybody but, needs somebody. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need you, you need me. Absolutely. And yeah, it doesn't yeah, matter yeah. how far we rise in society or mm -hmm. in academia, whatever mm -hmm. it is. We all need somebody. Yeah. 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 And, and, and looking at the, the big wide world, the bigger world, as in, you know, you're talking about rising to wherever. Yeah. I, I think it's so important that each youngster come forward with no limitation mm. because we come across it. We have come across it. Certainly, yeah. us. And, and, yeah. and, and people are still yeah. doing it now. Oh, yeah. Where people are putting doubt in your mind mm. that you can only achieve so much mm. for whatever reason they mm. want to do that. Yeah be it the colour of your skin, be it mm. female or, or male or whatever. Mm. And it's up to us to say, like you're saying there, you can be whatever you want to be. Absolutely. And that's from whatever to, to, to prime minister and, and all that sort of thing. Mm. You know, so it, it, it's so beautiful to share all this, this with your ladies. Mm. It, it's <laughs> Lady <laughs> Cynthia and Lady Phyllis. <laughs> and, and Lord, Lord Donald. Oh, you know that. <laughs> Well, can I just say one one last bit here? Um, yeah. um, you know, there's there's three people that I I admire. Two of them is from our local congregation, and it's just the the the, 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 the steps that they've taken and moved on. And I'm always um, in their corner, kind of sharing a bit with other people. And one of them is um, uh, Marvelly McLean. Mm -hmm. I'm always mm -hmm. saying to her, you can do it, mm -hmm. go forward. The other person that, that is, is Hermeline, mm -hmm. Hermeline mm -hmm. James. And the next person is Phyllis. Really? Oh, yeah, oh, because oh. I always I said, I said, I am so happy. I'm so elated for these women. I don't feel any way that, you know, they've really, uh, you know, laid the foundation and gone ahead and do the mm -hmm. things. I'm just so pleased that there's three of my sisters who I admire so much, that have oh, done so you. much, not just for themselves, but for their community and for That's their fantastic. church. Oh, That's fantastic. I needed to say that, Phyllis. Oh, yeah. I, I talk about you more than you think I talk about you. Ah, <laughs> oh. so, oh, so really and truly, that's so wonderful to get yeah, because you both on board then. Get not the long after I came to Birmingham, mm -hmm. um, then Phyllis went off to London, London to study. So in terms of um, uh, connections mm -hmm. within that period, mm -hmm. Phyllis was in London. Mm -hmm. right. But I've always said, I've always said, oh. I remember the, I remember the, 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 I think it was a Sunday when, when Pastor Tom says, uh, when you, when he recommended you for ministry mm -hmm. and he was going to set you forward. Mm -hmm. Can you remember? I think he might have been endorsing because I set forth in London. Yes, that's out it. In London, so he might he have was been endorsing, endorsing from up there. That's yeah. it. I remember it so. And I thought, wow, oh. this is great. So, uh, yeah. Oh, thank yeah. you, Cynthia. So that was just to finish that bit off. Yeah. Oh, no, I appreciate that. <laughs> Absolutely. And it's interesting that Donald should ask both of us to do this. Yes. You know, you know it's again, amazing, isn't it? The path of life, you know? Yeah. It's amazing, you know? 
And, you know, it's just... You wouldn't have known the connection and we wouldn't have solidified the connection that we have. It's been no. there, but, you know, it's amazing. I find it this is a mysterious... And, 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 and we should, you know, it's all it's all instinctive yeah. and help with others because, you know, I was um, talking to Tony about this because mm. obviously we, we did a recording, we talk yeah. all the time. And it really is just one snippet of information mm. and something else leads to something else. Yes, yes. You know, and, and we go from there. And that's how why it's so important to be discerning, isn't it? Mm. Sorry, that's why it's so important to be discerning. Yes. Yes. I don't let opportunities pass. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. And 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 doing this the forgotten generation mm. is really, really making because I'm passionate about all of this. So the moment I pick up on anything like that, I'm thinking I need to get this recorded if possible mm. and bring this together for yeah. the good of, mm. you know. So, ladies, it's been a privilege.